Hello everyone, this is Greg. I'm back today with another one of my custom figure reviews. This time, a Lothric Knight from Dark Souls 3. So, a lot of people that know me know that I'm a huge fan of the Soulsborne games by Bandai Namco. All three Dark Souls, Bloodborne of course. Just the aesthetic, the world, the storytelling, it's just the best for me. And then uh, Medieval Knights running around, it's my favorite thing. And I wanted to get into some figures for a long time, but was really torn on where to start. There are, you know, the box art boys, the main character armors, the elite knight set, the knight set from number three. Almost that those would be too easy. Not in terms of execution, but just showing up with one of those one day. Um, same thing with like a boss character, right? And I was like, what about an enemy? Just one of the enemy types. And I thought of my favorite enemy, the Lothric Knights from Dark Souls 3. I say that because they're the best example in those games of a classical set of plate armor, fully visored and closed, uh, aside from the cape and tabard, that you can see in those games. Because most of the time, it's it almost borders on fantasy. Um, there are a few characters that are the exception, but this one I really like. Let's get into the figure itself, and I'll talk more about the details and engineering and what went into this guy. Let's take a look at the accessories that this set will come with. I chose the Tower Shield Long Spear set. I love the Lothric Knights and all of their colors and weapons, but I just thought that these guys um, were a good place to start, because if I could figure out the Spear and Shield, um, the swords and smaller shields wouldn't be as big of a problem. Lots of game captures to get these just right some nice angles and then you know having to cheat a little bit with artistic uh, vision. I also chose to have a dedicated handle just for the magnetic clasp. I thought that'd be easier than trying to force it into those hands. And then the spear, I really tried to get uh, as much game accurate detail as I could while having to fudge some stuff as you do when you're making um, custom figures or facsimiles but I like to pride myself on accuracy, depending on what you can see, what you have access to as far as uh, game files and looking at the models, right? But I think I got close enough, and then places where I had to add my own flourish, I'm happy with it. So like the master sculpt for the shield, I had plenty of reference. If anything, it might be like 3% too big, but that's okay. And then it is magnetized again for the handle. And the spears are just wooden dowels with that fabric element on there, that kind of tattered cloth. The pommels are movable just so it can slide in the hand. Uh, I prefer that as opposed to trying to wedge it between the thumbs of characters' open hands. Once again, the spear tip attaches separately. I like to use a nice flexible resin for weapons and accessories and armor pieces. Just so you know, I don't want people to have to worry about breakage. A lot of people were asking if I was going to make the sword and shield version, or the great sword, which I plan on getting to, but each of these things requires so much uh, R&D time that I just had to commit to one set. And then, you know, it's like, well, the tower shield is a big rectangle, so that's not that hard. Uh, but we got to figure out the handle, they hold it a certain way magnets right here you can see so lots of trial and error troubleshooting um, problem solving but I think it worked out for this guy my knights include a pair of relaxed hands or reaching hands however you want to say it and then I also include a pair of uh, gripping hands as well as that fifth one that's just attached to the shield handle one of my biggest regrets is not being able to figure out engineering for really nice uh, swivel hinge joints or a ball joint, but the safest and quickest way was just a pivot uh, pin to go straight into the wrist. So it does only swivel, unfortunately. If I can figure out some better hands in the future, or a better way to do that. Um, but at this stage, just making resin casts and then having a pin go straight into the, the wrist is the easiest way for me. So that's why I included so many different hands. Hopefully there's still a lot of gestural options you can get. It's also important to me as a consumer, but thinking of my clients, that I want figures to function and uh, be well made for, I mean, they're display pieces, but so you can move them and pose them easy. So in this case, I looked at a lot of import figures and how they handle their accessories. 
So in this case, it's like, let's make it as easy as possible and have the spear handle slide right through there. That way we don't risk damaging paint or the sculpt on any of these pieces. So a little bit more time to set everything up, but that way it's safe and secure. I remember some McFarlane figures used to do that back in the day, but nowadays I see it a lot on import figures. So I was like, if I'm going to make the spear, it's got to be in these parts and work this way. As for the figure itself, I'll run you through all the details and some of the engineering and problem solving things I had to go through. So this is a figure that's, or a character that's in an enclosed suit of armor. And a lot of pieces that you can see are resin casts to make it easier to make duplicates of this character. And then some parts like the thighs and the shins are sculpted each time just to preserve the figure, the base figure's leg articulation. But once again, lots of screen grabs, cutting down the enemies, zooming in on them over and over, what a lot of cosplayers do, I know. So uh, we laughed about that as we were sharing. And then one of the parts I'm most proud of is the head because in game they appear with their visor down or raised, depending on how angry they are at you, I guess. And I wanted to figure out from the beginning how to make that a fully articulated piece. So it ends up being a resin cast uh, with those grills cut out, and then it's magnetized for the head. The only thing that I wish I could change in some way would be that it's a little bit oversized, but at this scale, that's kind of hard to control with thinness of material and stuff. The shoulder pads are also resin pieces magnetized, and I thought that would be a better compromise than trying to have them attached in some other way or glue them on. That way you can move the arms and then position them as you need to. Also that strange elbow piece that's present on a lot of uh, medieval sets of armor. This is a NECA figure making use of their newer double jointed elbows. So that actually left a really nice spot for that. It can kind of free float and rotate as needed. So that was kind of a happy accident, but it works out perfectly for the character's armor set. Just trying to capture as much detail as I could. Uh, and then proportions are always hugely important to me, making sure everything looks good. Because when you as the character put on armor sets, uh, you have a different body type than the enemies and bosses. Everybody's usually much taller and leaner. When you're wearing the Lothric Knight set as the character, you look squat and kind of silly. But when you see these guys in game, they're very tall and menacing and lean. So I wanted to capture that. Even though you can put the armor set around and turn your character around and get all the details, it's not the same as when you go up to one of the enemies and look at them. A little bit of troubleshooting trial and error there. You see the leg armor. The knee pads are attached to the upper leg, so it allows for some motion and security. The feet are actually resin casts as well. You guys know I love fabric elements on my toys, and Dark Souls characters are just armored knights usually with fabric, which is plus plus for me. So figuring out the armor suit and how to replicate it was enough of a challenge. And then tailoring and patterning these fabric elements. Uh, there aren't many on this guy, just the tabard, the cape, and then a couple other pieces on his left arm. And then the mantle. So, all in all, not a big deal if you think about it, but then making sure the proportions are right, I needed the right kind of fabric weight at this scale, uh, where to weather everything, getting those insignias, hand painting them, even patterned. Lots that go into this, and then the cape is wired as well. And as much as I love all of the Dark Souls designs, some more than others, and you know, the iconic Elite Knight set, the Lothric Knights are one of my favorite visual characters. What they stand for is also one of the best ways to describe Dark Souls uh, because they're they're all hollow by the time you run into them, you know, after centuries or millennia, but they still have their martial bearing where like other hollows will attack you out of insanity. The Lothric Knights, you have to duel with them because they never kind of drop their, their guard and they're very well trained, which is sc more scary because they're, it's like, are they intelligent? Are they not? They're standing around following the same orders for so long. And then when you see the first one with his visor raised and it's just, he's dead, I don't know, it just stuck with me. Also the red, because red's my favorite color. So just seeing them all kind of prowl around, clanking, I thought was very cool. And I really just wanted to make just a little facsimile that I could hold in my hand of these guys. Okay, we're going to go through articulation very carefully. These are custom figures, but I still like to make sure that they're durable. Um, I'm going to take off the visor and just show that the head can swivel. These are on a NECA base, so the heads have that ball joint at the end, 
or at the bottom, and then that pin that goes up into the head. So it allows for most of the range you want. And then I usually try to maintain the original figure's articulation as much as I can. Uh, in this case, to show it off, I'll take off the shoulder pauldrons. But if you're familiar with NECA, all of the joints are still there. Once again, you know, put the arm in place, uh, put the shoulder pad where you want it. Those new double jointed elbows, you kind of have to move that elbow piece in position, but I left it free floating so you can adjust it as you wish. Swivels, another swivel at the top of the gauntlet, and then the hand is on a swivel as well. I really like those open hands, they add a lot of character and you can get some cool poses without any weapons. It was a challenge for sure, all of that arm armor down there, especially that elbow piece. It's actually made up of two soft resin pieces glued together, the front and the back, while also looking just like it does in the game. It actually functions good enough for me, even though it kind of limits the super articulated uh, double elbows, but that's okay. The torso armor is a front and back plate attached to the figure, and if you know NECA figures, they have a waist swivel, and then sometimes they have a ball deep in the torso, and with this one, the swivel is present, and you can see the folds are attached up there. And there's even slight movement in that ball up there, but you could never tell unless you were familiar with this figure. Um, that's just to show it off. Typical NECA legs, 90 degrees forward. I always kind of like to make sure everything's tight uh, so it won't have floppy legs or anything. The knees. I do like to dremel out some areas, or exacto out some areas, to give more motion. So you can see way up there in the thighs I had to cut away and then the back of the knees because some neck of figures the sculpt is so tight that they don't allow for enough of a range of motion for me. So even though these are display pieces I like them to be able to get into some you know action and fighting poses. And then the neck of base is usually good enough for most things. Um, and then if I want to add some more, then I can do that. So the legs, I wish they could be a little bit more in some way, but NECA is just too restrictive, I think. So you can kind of get a kneeling pose. Uh, because the feet are on just a ball and they aren't super articulated, he can get really nice wide standing poses, but anything kneeling is going to be tough. Um, I did want to get one kneeling for this character because you do find some of them kneeling or praying and you kinda have to fudge it so you have to rotate that back foot either left or right because it can't just point backwards so a little cheat but you can kinda get something out of it if there's a large uh, fabric element like a robe or a cloak or a cape, I try and wire it to make it more dynamic and uh, especially for these guys with some fighting poses. Uh, but it can also return to just the, the flat hanging pose as well. Little thing, but I think it adds some character always when you're photographing or posing with these guys. I also wanted to compare this knight to the very first Lothric knight that I made uh, over a year ago version 1, generation 1, whatever you want to call it, using a different NECA base. And I made this guy just because I wanted one, and then I thought about halfway through, wouldn't it be cool to make molds of all these parts and pattern everything to make multiples for small order runs, which is what's happening now. But that meant kind of going back to the drawing board on 90% of the figure. The heads are the exact same and the visors, thank god. Uh, a lot of the armor pieces as well. But I was like, the proportions could be better, we need to find a new taller base. Lots of different things, new hands, new ways to attach stuff. So, I just wanted to show this older one that will remain on my desk. Um, I just, I kind of finished him so quick and then was just like, we need a better version iteration that I never really took pictures or thought of him as a completed project because I was like, well, the new knights will be the the for real ones. But it started with this guy, so I guess technically my very first Dark Souls figure, and then I just made a better version uh, to go off of. But you learn how it can be made better the second or third or fourth time. So it's just interesting to have stuff like that next to each other. I would like to go to a Bloodborne Hunter, and then I have to pattern and tailor 
the outfit, but once I have the patterns, I can reproduce them. Or start again for another iconic Dark Souls character, but we'll see. There we go. Here's the Lothric Knight Tower Shield Lothric Longspear set version 1 red. I'm really excited to dive in and do some more Soulsborne characters. Really not sure what I'm going to do next because it's going to be like this guy was a full research and development period from scratch. So we'll get there. It was really nice to come back to a project after being away from figures for so long. Fully come back to the drawing board and figure out everything from the ground up while keeping in mind from the beginning that I wanted to make a run of these things. So what to make molds of, what I could, had to make each time, what to pattern. Lots of challenges and I learned so much. Uh, toy production is insane, especially if you're one dude. Thanks to everyone who's ordered. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. For me, the Lothric Knight is a great symbol of Dark Souls and one of my favorite enemies and I'm really glad to have made what I made and have it on my shelf. Now for the big info, if you're interested in ordering one of these knights or being part of future order runs, please email me at gregsrabiaart at gmail. As always, check out my social media for behind the scenes uh, works in progress if you're curious how they're made, all the stuff that goes into these guys. Thanks again for watching, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, share if you want. This is Greg. I'll see you guys next time.